Okay. All right. Uh, here's a, a, a new uh, video. I, I want to explain um, something the previous two free rights uh, talked about. The extra credit figures were simile and metaphor. And there's some extra uh, important notes that I want to um, give about those two figures. And I wanted to um, do it in a separate uh, video thing. But also I want to take this opportunity to um, introduce you to my teaching assistant. This here is Rex. And oh, he's very excited about figures of speech. And so I just wanted to have an excuse to put him on video. Okay, so um, now down to business. All right, here we go. Um, no, not that. Hey, what is it? Uh, is that it? No, I don't think so. Wait, just a second. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, it's, <laughs> I hope I'm doing this right. I'm not silly good at this thing. Okay, um, so similes and metaphors, some important notes. All right, um, not all comparisons are similes. Um, similes have to compare things that are similar in an important way or ways, as I mentioned before. Otherwise, they can't be compared. Uh, but the things also have to be different kinds of things. Otherwise, it isn't a figure of speech at all. Um, it's literal. Okay, remember, a simile is a figure of speech. Remember what I said before about figurative versus literal. So, for example, here's a literal comparison. That dog is as big as a Great Dane. Not my dog, but some other dog out there. Okay? Now, here is the simile. That dog is as big as a house. Okay? The Great Dane comparison doesn't work because the dog is... You know, a Great Dane is a dog. You're, you're comparing two, two of the same kinds of things. The simile involves one kind of thing, a dog, and the other kind of thing, a house, okay? There is an example of this. I can provide an old um, cartoon from the 90s, okay? And uh, you can tell it's old because if you look carefully in the um, top right corner there, is his uh, email address is an AOL address, okay? And a lot of the references in the cartoon are... Um, 90s references. So Oasis, the famous uh, band from the 90s, English band from the 90s, Oasis, um, they're just the Beatlemania of the 90s. Beatlemania was another band um, back in the 70s. Um, Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq will make all the difference. And uh, Charlie, the Australopithecine, says, oh yeah, Shaquille O'Neal is the Michael Jordan of the NBA. Of course, that figure doesn't work because those are both basketball players, okay? Um, I've always felt that Billy Joel is the American James Taylor. Al Pacino is the Robert De Niro of actors. Uh, I find that the 70s are the 60s of the 90s. I like that one an awful lot. Um, you know, spoons are the forks of silverware. And then the party people come to him. Charlie, you're annoying us with your sudden infatuation with analogies, analogy being a kind of simile, um, which your proto-hominid mind seems incapable of properly constructing. Uh, we'd like you to leave. Uh, and out in the hallway, he says, that's okay. That party was the bad party of parties. Oh, good one. Okay. So, uh, I do appreciate that Charlie, although he, he lacks a skill in the figures, he has uh, uh, desire. He's got great gusto for it. Okay. So now, so that's simile. Okay. Now, another thing, important thing to keep in mind is the difference between similes and metaphors. A simile has the word like or as in it, okay? Juliet is like the sun. A metaphor, for something to be a metaphor, it does not have the word like in it. So the metaphor version is Juliet is the sun, okay? Juliet is like the sun is a simile. Juliet is the sun is a metaphor, okay? And so it's a, and once you, there's, there's an important thing there's an important fact, there's some important ideas behind um, that difference. Uh, metaphors are not about things being like each other, things being comparable to each other. Metaphors are about what you could call identification. That's not a great word for it, but it's like two things, two different things, different kinds of things becoming one. 
So I think it's kind of like a version of magic. Okay. So the old joke, uh, the Buddha uh, goes up to the hot dog vendor and, s- vendor and says, make me one with everything. Okay. Uh, and you know, the joke, okay. It's, uh, by the way, professors, professor types love explaining jokes and taking all the humor out of them. Okay, the, the, it's a pun. You you go to the hot dog vendor and you say, make me one with everything. That means a hot dog with all the, the trimmings on it. But when the Buddha says, make me one with ev- everything, he's talking about something properly, p- potentially magical. He, he, the individual, wants to become identified, this one with a part of, e- e- equivalent to uh, everything, the universe, okay? Um, the things, uh, me- metaphors, though, do have to work the same way that um, similes do in the sense that the things have to have some similarity uh, to enable the identification and some difference to make it magic, okay? Uh, what Aristotle said, okay? It's Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher. I actually am li- lately have been watching these um, crash course videos on the YouTube with the, the writer John Green, and one of the interesting things is at least as far as I'm concerned, is he spends a lot of time complaining about Aristotle. And actually, I like Aristotle. Although I think there's something to what he says, John Green says also. Okay, what does Aristotle say? The greatest thing by far is to be a master of metaphor. It is the one thing that cannot be learned from others. It is also a sign of genius, since a good metaphor implies an eye for resemblance. Okay, so notice when he says an eye for resemblance, he's talking about how metaphor does, there has to be something comparable, something similar about the two things, okay? So that's, that's, he's referencing that. Um, And when he says, when Aristotle says genius, he means something like what I would call magic. There's something uh, extra, extraordinary about it, okay? Um, Now, why metaphors? Well, what's the purpose of metaphors? Why do you use metaphors at all? Um, And this, um, this is a quotation from George Lakoff, the uh, a professor of linguistics at the University of California, Berkeley, wrote written a lot of stuff about metaphors. He says, in domains where there is no clearly discernible preconceptual structure to our experience, we import such structures via metaphor. Metaphor provides us with a means of comprehending domains of experience that do not have a preconceptual structure of their own. Uh, what on earth does that possibly mean? Okay, this is if you go to graduate school something bad happens to you in your life and you end up in graduate school in the humanities, you're going you're to read a lot of sentences like that. What does it mean? Um, in other words, metaphors can describe things that are difficult or impossible to describe literally. So the advantage of a metaphor, what a metaphor can do is can describe, can, can explain something that, um, that literal language can't seem to get at. So that's why like, when people feel very strong feelings, they like to resort to, to metaphors because literal language doesn't do justice to the strength of their feelings. Okay? Uh, thank you very much.